Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest? Are you ready to end this exaggerated reaction of quarantining and locking down in order to get back to living our lives? Have you been engaging spiritual practices in order to do so with more mindfulness, and enthusiasm for freedom and life than ever before, then welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I hope this episode finds you doing well. I hope you're healthy, both mentally and physically. There's currently quite a rise in depression and suicides in our country right now, and we know the cause. When everybody is living in a form of imprisonment, it's just unnatural for a human being. I think it was the Detroit Free Press recently that had an article stating that suicides in March of 2020 were up something like uh, 892% over the March of 2019 and 2018. This is a terrible and unnecessary thing. And I hope all of you have been engaging in meditative practices and meditation. I saw the other day one gentleman suggested that we up our meditation time to about 20% of our day in order to be as effective as it needs to be uh, while dealing with this quarantine and lockdown. And I do not disagree with him at all. I think that's a fantastic idea. Regardless, I hope you are doing things to keep your mind and body safe and strong and healthy, and you're doing well in spite of the current circumstances, which we do see starting to soften, and I think one way or another, they're going to come to an end very soon. We see this with the massive protests going on uh, throughout the country. Today's episode may be a little bit hard-hitting for some of you out there, but it is necessary at this time to address this topic in this manner. So I hope you're able to find it beneficial. And my reason for sharing this is to help you open your eyes a little bit more at this time when it's greatly needed, as well as to offer you a way to help protect your mental health. And when we come out of this, to have more mental strength than you had previously. Okay, so let's get into it. You, my friends, are being conditioned. All of us are. If we don't realize it's happening. Now, I've done previous podcasts on the topic of conditioning and how that actually shapes our perceptions, beliefs, our identity, and how we perceive the world around us. I've explained thoroughly how conditioning starts when we are very, very young, and we are being conditioned by everything around us all the time. Why is this important? Because in order for us to live a fully engaged life, we must release past conditionings. And in so doing, we have to be able to recognize when we are being conditioned so that we can prevent it. Being free of conditioning is the sense of freedom that we need in order to attain pure perception. Now, I spoke about pure perception in the previous episode, so you can jump back to that one and check that out if you'd like. And if you're interested in learning more about conditioning and the actual practices 
for engaging it and releasing it, you can find those previous podcasts uh, in the library as well. But basically, we are conditioned by the opinions and beliefs of our family, our friends, our teachers, preachers, you name it. We are conditioned by various forms and influences of media, and especially entertainment. Television programs and movies have always been a source of mass conditioning. But today, I would like to focus on a very specific stream of conditioning that is being rolled out in order to condition us in a very, very particular way. And this is why whenever I work with a student, whether they are a martial arts student or an expansion mastery student, one of the teachings that I make sure they get is that of recognizing and releasing conditioning. Because in order for us to learn correctly, in order for us to progress correctly, in order for us to think for ourselves and be free, we must be free of the conditioning and protect ourselves against any future conditioning. Because believe me, everybody's always trying to influence us from marketing to politics to religion to you name it. Everyone is being conditioned and influenced in a particular direction. In many cases, when I'm working with students, I ask them to give me an example of how they're exerting their free will uh, on their life. And then I'm able to actually trace their decision back to some form of conditioning. So what they thought was their free will, their choice, they could quickly recognize was not. But free will is our right. So... No, I am not offering any form of conditioning to you in what I share, in my practices, in my teachings. There's no conditioning. What I'm helping you to do is to break free of that conditioning, to think for yourself, to attain pure perception so you can see and know the truth for yourself. This guides you towards wisdom. So, On the spiritual path, we are looking to attain this sense of pure perception. And in order for us to live a fully engaged life, we need that pure perception and we need to be free of conditioning. So let's drill down on a very particular and what I would consider dangerous form of conditioning. It's actually even beyond conditioning. This is outright programming that is taking place right now. And it's going to revolve around the word social, right? Of course, social is a term meaning to relate to a society. Social in itself is not a negative thing. We have social studies in school. We have social security benefits. We have a social life. Some people are social climbers. See, all of those things are fine. Those are not harmful in and of themselves. But when this term social is twisted, inverted, and weaponized, it can become a very powerful tool for conditioning and programming the minds of the masses. Would you like to know how they're doing it? Because I'd like to share that with you. Our story begins back in December of 2012, imagine that, when social media was launched. Social media and other forms of media, such as magazines, newspapers, televisions, internet streaming programs, movies, you name it, all of these forms of media and entertainment have been used to condition and program the public. There is a reason why all the television shows are referred to as television programming. But for now, we will focus on social media. So it was in December of 2012 when this was launched. This is the platform that is primarily being used in order to push this social 
idea. So this platform gave rise for a lot of people to come together virtually and interact. On the face of it, and possibly, perhaps, in the beginning, was a wonderful thing. Great idea. However, like most good things, it gets hijacked and twisted into what we see now, which is a platform of censorship. And what else? Social conditioning. Just like with anything of value, it has its good uses and it has its abuses. The key here is we have to be aware of the abuses. We don't have to engage in them, but we have to be aware of them in order to make sure that they do not have influence over us. But it was social media that provided the necessary platform for them to launch the next wave, which was, you got it, my friends, the social justice warrior. What a joke. Social justice warrior is basically someone who expresses and promotes socially progressive views. And as we can see, a lot of times, those views include what? A socialist agenda. Now, most of the social justice warriors are conditioned in and coming out of universities. These so-called social justice warriors, or who aren't warriors at all, and they're not interested in any form of justice, they're being used to perpetuate certain perceptions and perspectives in order to condition the masses. And as for the term warrior, now that makes them an even bigger joke because they are the farthest thing from a warrior. So over time, we have gotten to be conditioned to look at social media as a wonderful thing. Everybody's addicted to it. You couldn't go into a store or restaurant where all of the, the people were standing around on their phones and Facebook and Twitter and all this other crap, right? This is where they're at. This is what they're doing. And they're just mesmerized by this thing, hypnotized by it. Everybody's hooked on it. And then once that happens, they release the social justice warriors, those who are going to help perpetuate the views that they are trying to condition us with. But, but these people are fighting for justice. As usual, they twist and invert different words to make it sound very benign when indeed it is just the opposite. And then we have the movement of the social democrat. What an oxymoron that is. And all kinds of socialist views are trickled out here and there in order to condition the masses to believe that, hey, maybe this socialism thing isn't so bad. Maybe this time we can get it to work. Um, no. So let's look at how social media is doing this. One way they're doing this is through, during the shutdown, we see trickled out here and there, different articles and photographs on how wildlife is coming back. Look what happens when humans get out of the way. Now we can take a picture of a coyote on a beach and monkeys running through the city in Thailand. And, oh, look at our skies are so clear. Yeah, when you're not spraying them. Do you understand what they're doing here? This is all part of pushing the idea of depopulation, that humanity is bad, and that the Green New Deal is something so good when it leads to the destruction of humanity. We see the same thing happening with all of the stimulus checks. Now, I'm all for relieving the businesses and uh, even the individuals who are struggling during this time. Don't get me wrong. Give them the money. I'm, I'm fine with that. However, look at where they're going with it. Where are they leading this? Into a social form of universal income. They're already trying to pass the bill to give all of us $2,000 a month. And this is an aspect of socialism. Pretty soon all the jobs will go away and then everyone is only making $2,000 a month. Now that may seem like a wonderful idea for those who can't work or choose not to work. But for those of us that work hard and make a good living, uh, it's not such a good deal, is it? 
Not to mention, you will have to become a slave to the state. And let's just be straight up here. Socialism always leads into communism. This is part of the agenda. Socialism into communism into transhumanism technocracy. What is that about? That's the agenda. Look it up. Agenda 2030. It's on the UN's own website. I highly recommend you educate yourself. It's not a conspiracy theory. The entire outline is right there on the United Nations website. You can go to it today. And for all of those people that are so afraid of catching COVID-19, oh my goodness, we're all going to die, right? But you're so willing to take that $2,000 a month. Let me explain something to you. Right now, there's a little under 8 billion people on the planet. The people that want to give you that $2,000 a month are hell-bent on reducing that population to 500 million. Do you think you're so special that you're going to be one of the 500 million? I know I won't be. And let us look at one of the social practices in communism. The social credit score. According to various internet sources, this has its origin from the policing and management methods used by the communist leader, Mao. Take a minute and let that sink in. It's being used in China right now, and it's being brought to the U.S. That's right. They're trying to put it in place right now. Now, this isn't coming, it's here. They're working on putting it in place. It's, it's verified. You can look it up for yourself. You can research everything I'm saying for yourself, and I encourage you to do so. This is a tool for control over the masses. And our current credit score system here in the United States is simply the precursor to this. Once we all get used to this game that seems to make no sense as to how our credit score bounces up and down so much and how we get rewarded for incurring more debt and penalized for paying that debt off, eh? see the twisted, inverted nature of things? This credit scoring system, once we become comfortable enough with that, then they can slide in that social aspect. Why? Because social is good. We have the social Democrats and the social justice warriors and the social media, and we're just conditioned to accept anything social as good. And that leads us to a recent press conference by the wonderful governor of California, Newsom, when he said that he fully realized that putting these lockdown orders in place was not necessarily legal to enforce, and he was relying on social pressure to help people do the right thing. Social pressure. What does that mean? Ah, we're going to use the social justice warriors now, not only in the virtual life, but in actual three-dimensional life. We will use them to force everyone else to conform. Let us take a look at what social pressure actually refers to. Social force, influence, and demands placed upon other people. Hmm. This is an all-new level of peer pressure. Whereas the politicians are using the programmed, conditioned people who have been programmed with their agenda to put pressure on the rest of society. And just look at New York's prize of a governor there, Cuomo, as he's telling people to turn other people in, to take pictures of them breaking the rules and send it to them so they can face fines or possible imprisonment. But see, if these governors use social pressure, they're using the people to do their job, to force their agenda, to police one another this way. And then they don't look like the bad guy, do they? No, they just stand up there smiling away. Isn't it interesting how they're outdoors smiling around other people, and yet they're not wearing a mask? Huh, imagine that. So the takeaway is this, people. We have all of these new social terms being presented and brought into mainstream. Why? To condition us to accept socialism. 
to program us into believing that it's not so bad. And hey, you know, it might be the way to go because this other stuff is so bad. We can't go back to the way we were. We need the new normal. What do they mean by the new normal? Socialism, folks. Socialism. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is most of these people that not only buy into this, but are so easily conditioned and programmed by this stuff, they've never been to a socialist or communist country. My wife and I have. We've spent quite a bit of time in some of them. And let me tell you, when you see the poverty levels and you see the absolutely insane authoritarianism there, you get a dose of reality real quick for what it truly is, not this romanticized view that's being pushed on the young and impressionable in the universities. This is not the time to be a sheep. This is not the time to be mindless and easily conditioned, easily led in herds to our own destruction. This is not the time to be a sheep. You get it now? Hopefully you can see this for yourself. Hopefully you can understand. When they keep coming out with new terms, social this, social that, they're conditioning us to accept their socialist agenda. Right now, they are pushing this agenda down our throats with an intensity and rate of speed that no one saw coming. So what do we do to protect our minds from this conditioning? Well, it, it's not that difficult. Once we understand that it's actually happening, we destroy its strength. We destroy the illusion and we see the truth. In other words, once you're aware that they're doing it to you, it has no power over you. It has no effect upon you. You just have to be aware that it's happening and how it's happening. It's kind of like a twisted version of, of marketing is what it is. I mean, look at it. Marketing is going to cause the, the, the masses to run after this fashion or that fad or this diet fad or whatever, right? Now they're using the same thing. They just twisted the process and they're using it in order to send all of us uh, running with open arms to socialism, but once you understand what they're doing, and, and a lot of people are calling this being red-pilled, okay? I Whatever. I don't know about all that. But all I know is that they have the right idea, at least in, in theory, because once we look at it and go, oh my goodness, they are doing that to us, then all of its power falls away and it, it can't affect us anymore. So this is why in expansion mastery and other systems, uh, all spiritual practices contain very particular practices that allow us to go in and recognize the different ways we have become conditioned. And like I said, I did an entire podcast on this process. So you go back, access that, and you'll be able to go through the whole thing. And this will make so much sense. But once we are able to look inside ourselves and recognize, oh, that's why I like to do that. Oh, that's why I'm attracted to this. Oh, that's why. When you start to understand all the ways in which you've been conditioned, it starts to release it. And you are free to change certain behaviors, such as procrastination or whatever. That was a symptom of that conditioning. So once you go through these practices and you're able to recognize this conditioning within yourself, you then become very capable of releasing that conditioning. And in so doing, you create a sense of mental strength for yourself to instinctively recognize when someone is trying to affect you with some sort of conditioning or outright programming. And this is not new. Humans have been manipulating one another with such things for thousands and thousands of years. What I want to do is help you open your eyes to the current threat of conditioning that we are all faced with, not only in the United States, but intensely so here right now. But this is a world threat. 
And remember, folks, um, I subscribe to a term that uh, a very cool guy, Gerald Salente, coined. I'm a political atheist. Right? So I'm not far right. I'm not far left. I'm not far anything. I'm not right or left anything. I'm nothing. I do not like politics, and I have no respect for any politician whatsoever. I feel that if we want to take a look at the evil that the human mind is capable of producing, all you have to do is look at politicians. So I would leave you with a little homework. Besides, do you have anything better to do right now? No, of course you don't. That's right. You can't get out of it. So hopefully soon you will have great things to do again. But in the meantime, take advantage of this downtime and ask yourself a few questions. Maybe write down at least three different ways you can start to recognize you were conditioned to believe or understand things in a particular way at some point in your life. It's not that hard. And then ask yourself, who is trying to condition me today? Who is trying to influence, shape, and control my perception today? Who's doing that? And in what way? What tool are they using? What phrases? What platform? What are they doing? What are they using to try and condition me right now, today? Maybe write down a few. It shouldn't be that hard. The war to control the minds of the masses has been raging for thousands of years. The names, faces, and tools used change, but the objective does not. But imagine if you have the ability to be completely unaffected by it. Imagine that. This is what I mean in all of my posts and podcasts when I say think for yourself. You have to be able to have pure perception to do that. You can't come from a conditioned frame of mind. So... If you would like to know, if you would like to experience for yourself a sense of freedom unlike anything you have ever experienced before, then free yourself from past conditionings and protect yourself from present conditioning. And you will feel a massive weight fall off of your shoulders. You will feel a sense of of freedom and lightness, unlike anything you've experienced at any other time in your life that you can recall. And yes, of course, there are those who don't want to do that. Why? Because then you have the responsibility to think for yourself. But this is what human beings were designed for. This is how we were designed to live, thinking for ourselves. And we should never, even for a moment, consider giving that up, along with any other rights and liberties, for anything. For to do so is to willfully surrender our sense of humanity. Thinking for yourself, seeing the truth for yourself, having an honest experience through pure perception is your right. It's your birthright as a human being, and it is just one of the avenues that leads you to the ability of living a fully engaged life. Please remember to visit me at www.expansionmastery.com, right? You got plenty of time to do it. So give me a visit there. Stop by, read some of the blogs, check things out, grab an autographed copy of the book if you would like, and if you're in a financial place to do so. And of course, there's that newly revised and expanded ebook on there that is very helpful, especially at this point in time. You could emerge from this thing as the person you always wanted to be. Check that manual out. In the meantime, get outside, get some fresh air, do some exercise, keep yourself healthy, don't eat junk, and get in some meditation time. Turn off Netflix, put down the phone, you can still live your life. Get out there and live it as best you can right now. Why now? Because there is no other time. 
Until next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in your health, your practices, and your life. I love you all. I thank you all for supporting this podcast. I cannot tell you how much it means to me when you share it, you like it, you, you subscribe, you leave comments. I, I see everything that you're doing, and I appreciate it. I reach out to some of you individually when I can to share my appreciation with you. I, I really do love you guys. Thank you so much. And until next time, stay healthy and take care.